All right. Hello, how is everyone today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and for today's masterclass here on Adobe Live, this is going to be part two of Designing with Sound in Adobe Audition. And we have been working on uh, a very cool boxing scene footage courtesy of Adobe Stock. And last week, I took you through the process of um, essentially setting up the multi-track environment to begin the process of preparing files uh, to synchronize things against picture, right? So we covered a whole bunch of things, adding markers, and then of course going through all the various sound libraries, and we talked about some of the free ones available to you as Creative Cloud subscribers, which you can find directly from within Side Audition. There's a link in there up in the help menu. And then uh, I also showcase some uh, royalty-free available sound effects that you can access online at the BBC. So if you want to check that stuff out and need the URLs to go where to find it, you can check out last week's archived broadcast. In the meantime, today we're going to pick up where we left off and hopefully try and finish the project. Now, as many of you probably imagined in watching it or noticed watching it, you know, sound design is it's a it's a it's a process right it takes a lot of time it's not fast especially just auditioning all the different sounds and things that you want to use because we talked about this concept of layering the audio right it's very much like creating a composite in photoshop good sound design is all about layers right layers and layers of sound to create that one hit that one grunt that one punch that one you know whatever whatever that element is uh, there's lots of things involved to make that sound really great. So as I always say, of course, the conversation is happening on Behance.net slash live. So if you're catching us on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, thank you so much for joining. But we're, I'm only monitoring the live Behance chat. And for all of you in the Behance chat right now, great to see you. Thank you so much for attending again. Tim, we've got you. Steve, Eric, Mia, Andreas, Hilda, Plus Designs, Rosie Watson, Susan, Julia, Jordan, so great to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, all right, so with that, uh, I don't wanna waste any time, I wanna get right into it because as I said, I'm really hoping that we can finish this all today. Now, one thing I also wanna tell you is that uh, earlier this week, in fact, just a few days ago, I streamed just on my regular daily streams, um, working, uh, continuing to work on this project. So again, just kind of in hopes of getting us closer to the finish line. So we're just about, we can just about finish it in the hour today. Um, so we're gonna start just by listening to where we left off last week. And again, just for a quick refresher. So one of the first things we did, we've got our Adobe stock video here, is that one of the techniques that I talked about, if you're gonna be doing any kind of sound design, laying in effects and Foley and other things that need to be timed against picture, easiest way to do that is to first go through and mark everything. So using just shortcut key M, M for marker on the US keyboard, uh, you can see I created all these markers in the timeline at appropriate timecode locations where there were particular hits. And then over in the markers panel, we went ahead and just by clicking on the markers, you can edit the names of those and defining what each of those different marked sections needed. So in some cases, it was a punch. You can see here it was a, a, a miss and a <laughs> something like that. We needed some kind of sound effect to simulate that whoosh right, of him missing the hit, you know, gloves hitting together, soft hit, punch, swing and a mist, soft hit, power hit, right hook, left hook with whoosh. So we went through and we labeled as much as we could get through, right? And then we began the process of laying in just individual hits, really just for timing, right? We just wanna make sure that the timing is right. And we got kind of the consensus in watching the stream, listening to the stream last week, that the timing was really solid. So let's take a quick listen, kind of where we left off. I'm also leaving in <coughs> some of the crowd ambience that we heard in there as well. So you'll be able to, uh, you should be able to hear that, all right? So here we go, take a quick listen. All right, and that was where we left off. That's, that's as far as we got. So again, it took us, you know, a good 35, 40 minutes to get about five seconds in. Okay, now yes, I was explaining a lot more and we were going through things, but realistically, that's, 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 a pretty, that's pretty good, right? If you can lay down the foundations, the skeleton, uh, the outline, the flow chart of sound design for what is, what is it, a 15 second piece? Yeah, and you can do that in about a half hour, you're, you're doing pretty good, okay? And again, these were just individual hits, so we're gonna build up more of these throughout the day. Now this is where we left off last Friday. Let me show you 
where I took it to yesterday. And already you can see, first of all, I finished all of the markings. So up at the top here, you know, there's a whole section where we go into slow-mo. You can see here I have one of these. The first one is slow-mo face punch, all right? So there's a whole section where it cuts into to slow motion. So I started adding all the initial hits for that. I added some additional hits in there as well. And I also added some additional layers of ambience as well as some sound design to kind of simulate in slow motion what what those hits, how those hits differ from the real time hits. Something that we talked about last week in the section here where it goes to slow motion. First of all, everything slows down. So not just the hits, <clears throat> excuse me, something in my throat. Not just the hits themselves, but even the crowd ambience. Everything has to change in tonality when you change suddenly, you know, the, the speed on, uh, on camera, right? So you're going to hear that here and we're going to break down how I did that. And then on top of that, um, I don't know if we're going to get to any music today. Probably not. But what happens? Think about movies that you see when someone gets clocked in the face. You know, and again, I recommend check out Rocky or Creed or any recent movies or, you know, things like that where there's fight scenes and they do stuff in slow motion. There's all, they always use sound design to kind of simulate the mental state of the person being, a being hit, right? They get hit in the face. Yes, there's a punch. But then there's also that uneasy, unnerving kind of dizziness. What does dizziness sound like? That's one of the things I started to create here. And as I reveal to you some of the sounds I use, you're going to see it, it's, it might shock you. Like, really? That's what you used? Yeah. Slowed down, manipulated with effects. You can use a lot of different types of Foley and other ambient sounds to kind of simulate that, that uh, disoriented kind of feeling, you know? And that's really where, again, layering and compositing, it's, it's, it's an art. It's a creative art here to do really beautiful sound design. So take a listen here. This is a little bit further along. Again, we've got the whole scene um, <clears throat> sketched out with initial hits. Check this out. And here, I'll even go full screen on this so you can appreciate it. Here we go. Again. <laughs> All right. Pretty neat, right? Your 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 slight quiet in the chat says it all. <laughs> okay. So let's start breaking down some of the things that I added, and then we're gonna add some additional stuff in here, all right? So all of your initial hits here, these are basically the same. Again, I've got some additional crowd noise. I've also added some effects in the form of some reverb and some delay. Um, you're hearing those in very specifically timed sections, namely when it goes to slow motion, all right? To again, kind of change up the feel and the emotional intensity of the scene. I, I, it's, it's funny, I wish, I wish it were longer, 15 seconds now, it almost seems too short. But again, the time to get there, it's a lot. This prob the, those additions yesterday, it's probably another three hours of work just to get that all time just right. Mia, that was heavy, nice. <laughs> Steve, great stuff, oh, thank you. Very cool. Eric Sue, I wish I could do all that. Eric, you absolutely can. That's what this is all about, right? So again, one of the great things is, as we just kind of look at some of the slow-mo sections here, and maybe we'll just, let me play this back right from here. Right, so this is kind of where there's this moment where no one's hitting. And then I used this whoosh here to kind of segue into that slow-mo face punch right there, all right? And that slow mode face punch is comprised of one, two, three, four, five. I, I actually already kind of designed that sound just to kind of give it real emphasis. And it's a real crack. Take a listen. And I'm also using some delay. Because again, you're simulating that feeling. You get smacked in the face. It's slow mo. Yeah, you're kind of in this like dreamy, 
disoriented state, right? We're probably gonna add some nice low frequency stuff in there. And then the second hit, so the, and it's a little brighter, right? Because it's a face punch. So on purpose, by design, on this attack right here, Now this was a shot, this was one of the slaps, bright slap, abs. Here's the, here's the original untouched sound. But with a little bit of added reverb and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of manipulation in the multi-track, right? It just becomes bigger. Okay, and then all together, Oh, notice even here, I have, I found some additional effects in our loopology sound effects, right? So again, 10,000 royalty-free sound effects that you can access through Audition up here in the help menu, right here, download sound effects and more. Um, I found one here, it says Foley, so it's in the Foley section, table, fist hits hollow wood table. So this is what that sounds like. Actually, we're hearing two, two things in there. Right? Kind of dead, right? Nothing major there. Then I found another one. Gra hand grab wooden gate. Then our deep pillow punch. But this one was kind of the this one was kind of the kicker here that kind of really sells it. Spring, thick spring. So I don't know if it was in this Foley collection here. Let's see. Is it in this one? Yes. So I went this one, thick spring two. Now again, you're thinking, how does that apply with a body hit at all? Well, first of all, I slowed it down, I stretched it out, and added a little reverb and delay to it. And then when you bring all that stuff together... Now you notice there's also this kind of warbling thing happening as he starts to fall. And that came in the form of this right here. So this effect, this sound effect, sheet metal wobbling. What? Sheet metal? All right, so here's the original. All right, it's just like a piece of sheet metal and someone's like that. Brought it into our multi-track here, all right? In properties, you'll see that I assigned it to the monophonic type and then just stretched it out in duration. So I left the pitch the same. I liked the pitch. Again, it's kind of simulating that disoriented feeling, but I wanted to make it, I wanted to stretch the duration. So the pitch is the same. It's just taking longer to play back those pitches and it creates this really wonderful sort of, you can, you can feel it, this kind of disorientation that's happening after he gets hit in the chest. All right, and what you'll see here, you can see right there, I overlaid two copies of it. And as I talked about last week, in Audition, when you overlay clips on top of one another, they will automatically crossfade. And then you have the ability to adjust those crossfades with this little crossfade handle right here, okay? So again, really simple things, random sounds to create something very big, all right? Check in the chat here. All right, Cedric Bronkers. Layering sound effects is like layering ingredients to make something taste more interesting and complex, using it more and more lately. Absolutely, right? I mean, that's the key. And as I said in the first episode, seldom do you find one sound. I mean, sometimes. In fact, there's a few of the hits here which are probably good with just a single. But, you know, for most things, you know, if you think of like sci-fi, seldom is there just one sound that's used for, you know, an engine or, a, or, or, you know, a spaceship taking off or landing. It's usually a combination of things. Same thing applies here. All right. Eric Sue, great pro tip, really creative. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? 
Mia, would you create a few types of hit sounds that are different for each boxer? Yeah, so Mia, I don't know if you're just joining us for the first time today. So yeah, so what, what you'll see in my library here is that I did just that. So some of which I acquired from libraries, the libraries that I just showed you from Loopology. Some I recorded myself. So these are ones I recorded myself. But it's not that the sounds, the hits are specific to the boxer. They're just different because every hit is going, is going to sound a little bit different. And I was pointing out that if you have, you know, if I used this punch, these two for the two boxers, every time, even if I pitch them up or down, it's, it's, just, it's just not going to sound right. It's going to sound fake. It's going to sound like someone added sound, you know, almost like in a meme kind of way. So yeah, you absolutely want variety and that's what the layering is all about. I'm not saying that every hit is gonna require, you know, that slow-mo one that I just played for you. That's like six layers, six or seven layers. Not each one of those is gonna require six or seven, but depending upon the intensity, right? And you're also kind of playing against the rhythm of the shot, you know? If it's a pum pa, pum pa, pum pa, the first hit needs to be a little softer, a little deader, a little lighter. The second hit, eh, if it's a combination, I'm talking like I actually know boxing terms, but if it's a combo, boom, pa, boom, pa, boom, pa, you know, that second hit needs to have more emphasis. There has to be a little bit of a crescendo in there. So you're going to vary not only the selections you use, but the pitch and the position and the decay, right? How long those appear on screen. So yeah, great question. Great, great question. All right. I think I can do it, but I wish I could be as good of a presenter as you, Jason. Ah, thank you very much, Plus Designs. You're very, very nice. All right. And really, I believe any, any, anybody can do this stuff. It's, you know, it just takes practice. That's right, Mia. Yes, I did. I hit myself in the stuff. The things I do for the streams, right? I hit, I punched myself in the abs for a good 10 minutes. Feeling pretty rock hard today, too. If I do say so myself. All right. Ah, thank you, Akin. You're very nice. All right, so let's let's keep going here. So I just showed you again using some sound effects, right? M metal plates to simulate that disoriented state. Now, what you'll notice that right after, while he's still kind of disoriented, if I look up at my marker here, foot foot hits the corner post. So he bangs into the corner post here and you'll see like the indent if you're watching right here. I'm circling on screen for you, right? So we needed a sound effect for that. So again, I took one of our pillow deep punches, which started out like this. All right, and added it right here, but dropped the pitch. I stretched this out 800%, all right? so you kind of lose a lot of the attack. And then did the same thing when he kind of hits the floor. And for that one, look, look what I wound up using. Foley door, large room. So what did that sound like? Right? It sounds like a door, but it's not a door here because again, I stretched it, I adjusted the pitch. So in this case, if we look at it, let's go to properties. So you can see it's 100% of its original length, which means I didn't adjust duration. This one I most likely did a vary speed on. Remember, vary speed, as you make it longer, the pitch will go lower. This one, I just, I kept the duration the same, but made a pitch adjustment, which if we go in here, we're gonna see just that. And sure enough, there it is. So I dropped it in almost 10 semitones, right? To give it just a much more dead, flat kind of sound. But I feel like it needs, it needs some kind of like, <clears throat> you know, again, is that what it really sounds like when he hits the ground, like an explosion? No, but you want to feel the weight of his admittedly somewhat skinny looking body here. Um, <laughs> you you want to feel the weight kind of just coming into a resting position because he's, he's out, right? Like he's out. He's not knocked out, but he's he's in that state of mind so we're gonna we're gonna build these up so maybe we'll start there maybe we'll kind of start at the end and work backwards 
but I'm really happy with how these slow-mo hits turned out. Right? And for the moment, let's turn off the ambience. Oh, and this is the other one I added. This is like, a, this was also from Loopology. It's a, it's a small crowd, human crowd cheering. So it's just as, as opposed to these, which were like large wrestling crowds. So just to kind of bring the audience a little closer, these, again, they're older samples, probably from the 60s or 70s. So they also sound a little more old school. Also, they're probably in a very big venue. This is in a, you know, an empty gym. There's no people anyway, but to sell the image a bit more, we're just adding in crowd noise. So I needed something that was a little closer um, literally, literally like closer to the microphones. So that's why this human crowd cheer one was pretty good. Um, cause it kind of just sounds, yeah, like you're in a smaller space. Okay. But for the moment, let's go ahead and turn those off and let's focus on the end here. All right. What have we got here? What's up Lee Gaynor? Mia, I'm good with Logic, excited to work with Audition. Oh yeah, listen, if you can use Logic, I mean, Logic is amazing. Um, I tend to think the, 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 the environments that you have to create are a lot more complex. Audition is, is pretty plug and play for the most part. I mean, it's mixer follows standard conventions, but as far as routing and stuff goes and kind of just finding your way, I don't know, maybe, I, I, I'm, I'm a little biased, I suppose, but of course I use everything, but I mean, I think this one's a little easier. So if you can do it in Logic, you can definitely do it here. All right. Again, people still produce with MIDI. They could. I just don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, MIDI is used for all kinds of things. Unfortunately, MIDI is not supported in Audition. So as I say all the time, if, you know, music or whatnot is your main thing and you want to stay Adobe, sadly, we just don't have MIDI support. So you got you to gotta work elsewhere. Now, if you're adding MIDI to existing live audio and then you want to mix or master, you would render those MIDI tracks out and you could of course mix that and master it in Audition. You know, that's up to you. Um, but sadly we don't support MIDI. Okay, so slow-mo section. Very powerful. Now let me just, actually I wanna show you that too because this is pretty cool. So what do we think of the delay? Are we kind of getting the delay? Are you feeling how the delay kind of sells the, the intensity of those hits? So this was, this was a little bit of a complex process here and I wanna show you that. So again, we have track effects and clip effects, right? Clip effects happen just on the clip and they can be independent of the effects that you add to the entire track. So on this track four, you'll see that on one of the effects sends, oh, not this one. That's the reverb send. Where is my, uh, oh, well, that, that, that's fine. This is the same, same thing, actually. Um, I'm sending that, psh, that punch, that first punch to a reverb. Now, there's other things on this track. In fact, there's a punch just before it. There's no reverb on there. Listen to it with reverb. Don't mind the echo there. Let me turn the delay off. All right, so here you'll see reverb, no reverb, and then reverb. Right? Now the UI is getting a little busy, right? Because we've got all these vertical lines for all of our markers. What you also will see is that we've got these multicolored lines happening in what we call the automation lanes down here. So what I've done in the mixer is I have a couple of different sends leveraging buses. So buses are a way for you to send the audio from multiple tracks or all of the audio in a particular track to another track. This is also known as submixing or subgrouping. In audition, we refer to it as busing, okay? So I have a bus that contains just a reverb effect. So I can send the sound from any track to that bus. Thing is, I don't wanna send all of it all the time just when I want it for these slow-mo hits. So I do that with automation and I don't actually have to physically click or tap anything. I can do it with keyframes. So what you'll see here is I got my reverb on a bus. And by the way, busing is very complex. We're not gonna get into all that right now. If you wanna check out and learn how to do all of that, you can look at the previous 
uh, the, the, the previous master classes on audio, or you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Jason Levine Video, and you can check out Audio 101. It's a whole series on mixing and mastering and everything audio. And there's a whole section in there on mixing and submixing and subgroups and busing and everything else. The short version of it is, it's very simple though. You go up to the multi-track menu, you say, add stereo bus track. It makes one for you, all right? You give it a name and let's say we call this flange. We might use a flanger. And then you just use a, you know, uh, you, you can send it on any particular channel. So whatever it happens to be. Um, and you can add effects to that bus. So I might come in here under modulation and add my flanger, something like that, okay? And then on the track that you wanna send from, you go into your send section here. And so you can have this going to a reverb and then on send two, it can also be going to the flange, okay? That's a really, really fast way of setting up buses. Again, not gonna get into that right now. Um, but in any case, what I'm doing is using automation as I'm able to enable or disable sending that signal to that reverb bus. So whereas the first hit has no reverb, but the second hit does, that's all controlled via this envelope that you see here. I'm gonna expand this so you can see it a little bit more. So these lanes, the automation lanes, which by the way, this is your read, write, latch, touch. We have the same controls in Premiere Pro. Got to twirl down this little triangle here. And then you say, show envelopes. And in this case, we're doing it for the send one power, right? So I'm able to automate when I turn on the send of that reverb so that it'll send the signal of that hit to the reverb bus. I tell it what I want to see, the volume, the power, or the send one power, which is this purple line that you see right here. And then just like that, in this state on the bottom, it's off. At the top state, it's on. If I wanted it to turn off again, I could do something like that. So watch this now. You'll see, notice the, the, the power button is off. It's gonna play this first sound. Then when it gets right here, it's gonna turn it on. This will go green. And then after this, it's gonna turn it off based on that keyframe we just created. Watch this. Notice it's off again. And then the next hit will be dry. Okay, let's undo those because we want that spring to go through that reverb as well. So take a listen. <laughs> kind of a cool, again, dark, springy, bright, buzzy kind of ambience. I mean, I, I think, you know, it kind of, again, you're trying to get that feeling, that feeling getting smacked, <laughs> getting hit, all right? Reverb is great on everything, yes. Well, not always. <laughs> okay. All right, Tim is answering a bunch of stuff here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right. Okay. What's up, Pawan? Okay. All right. So let's work on these end hits. Okay. So when he hits the post, again, we need something something like he's you know bumping into something so let's start with some of these foley effects here um you know we're gonna have to get creative i'm just gonna start auditioning these things no That could possibly work. So that's table drop into place plastic. Let's try it, all right? So drag this in, snap it. By the way, the blue line that you see there, 
That's called, this is, this is referred to as clip spotting. So you can see right from the very beginning of the sound effect, wherever you grab a clip, because I'm dragging it from the media browser, it's gonna take it right at the beginning. This is a way to allow you to frame accurately. Now we're in subframe because we're monitoring our timeline here in hours, minutes, seconds. That's why I've got two flavors of time code on the video, hours, minutes, seconds, and actual frames per second. Um, but this is allowing me to perfectly align this with the beginning of the original sound effect, which you can see is actually not at the marker. It happens a little bit before. So let's stick this in this track. All right. And yeah, I'll even adjust the start to right about there. Now again, this is just native dry. So let's take a listen here what this sounds like. Kind of cool. All right. Now, obviously, it's a little too bright, a little too dry. Uh, we probably want to dirty it up. We probably want to EQ it. We want to do some more to this. So first, I'm thinking we need to stretch it a little bit. So let's go for this because it's it's got some warble in there already. Uh, remember, there's a difference between the quality playback of real time and rendered. Real time is meant for, again, being able to audition it quickly in the multi-track. These are all pretty short samples, so even if you choose rendered, it's not gonna take a heck of a lot of time. The difference is that rendered is just gonna give you sort of the final output quality of what that sounds like stretched or slowed down or sped up. So we're gonna go into rendered for this, particularly because it already has some of that warble, and I don't want it to um, lose any of the attack, all right? So let's do that and I think, I think I wanna try vary speed because I wanna stretch this out just a little. Remember, the duration, if we're looking up here, this sound effect only needs to last for you know approximately a second and a half because then he hits the ground, right? So you can even see, we're not, we're not really seeing, you know, that isn't vibrating past a, really where it, where it is right there. That's okay, we can make it a little bit longer as it dissipates in, in amplitude anyway. So with vary speed, that's going to, again, if I stretch it out using these little handles at the top left and right, this is automatically going to drop the pitch, right, as I make this longer, right? So we're, we're slowing it down and simultaneously dropping the pitch. So let's try maybe 150% stretching there. Let's take a listen and hear what that sounds like. That, that, that could work. It almost seems a little fast. Now, again, it's a bit bright, right? It's kind of standing out a bit too much. So this is where I'm gonna go into effects rack under clip effects. I'm just going to EQ this a little. Now again, you might say, okay, why not use the track EQ? That's this button up here, right? You can also access this if we're in the mixer, right? These are all of your track EQs. Well, I don't wanna use the track EQ because I've got different sounds on this track. So if I were to EQ this very dark, take some of that high end edge off, it's gonna make everything on this track darker and take all the high edge off. So I, I don't want that. Um, I'm gonna treat this independently so that's why we're going to use a clip effect, not a track effect. So on this clip, and here I can even make a, a little selection and we can loop play that back. Let's, uh, let's go in here and let's add our parametric, which is the same as the track EQ. By the way, you could also use, you know, VST EQs or whatever you want. I'm just trying to keep these things native for you here. All right, so let's reset and Maybe we'll just do a, a high pass and just roll off some of that high end. And I'll kind of know when I, when I get it to where I want. So let's, let's play this back, start dragging it down now. I kind of like that. 
I'm, I'm thinking it's still too fast. So in that case, I'm gonna stretch it out even more. Now, again, we may need to fade this out sooner, but it, it's just, it's, it's too, it's too, it's too real time, right? We're like in one fourth time right now. So I'm gonna slow it down even more. Let's see what this sounds like. See, play it a little more in context. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to add a little more, but you see where I'm going with this, right? You kind of see the the um, the ropes moving. Also, we can probably drop the amplitude a little bit. Maybe this also needs to be sent over to the um, to the delay bus. This could probably benefit from a little bit of delay going on there, or maybe some reverb. Let's see. Do now? Do I have any sends on this channel? I don't. I'm not even using any of the sends at all. So I could. I could send this, let's, let's try that. Let's go ahead and send this to some delay. All right. And we'll make this pre-fader. I'm just gonna set an arbitrary level amount. And then just like I showed you, I need to be able to turn on the power here. So I don't want everything being delayed all the time, just this one hit. So under show envelopes, it's going to be send one output power off. All right. So this is in the on state. Click a keyframe. Click another keyframe and drag it down. That's the off state. All right. So now you'll see it's off. All right. And when it hits it, it's going to go on. Let's go ahead and turn our delay back on. There's a lot of almost, maybe it's even too much on the, uh, the stopping position, but I, I, I kind of like it. It's something. We still need a little bit more attack. All right. So let's keep working on that. All right. I'm checking the chats here. All right. No, no questions. Okay. So we need, we need something that's going to be like a, we need like a thud, a big doom. So yeah, these are like toy gun sound effects. I don't think about any of, any of this is gonna work. Wood, mm, no, scrape, rattle, squeak, tree branches. It's another whoosh. Oh, by the way, uh, and I believe I added some of those in here. There's, I found many more whooshes uh, in our Lubology libraries. Some of them are just, uh, it's none of these that I wound up using here. I guess I didn't use them. Um, there's, there's so many, uh, and I found them in like, I think there were some in Foley and then also some in, um, in the, uh, human, human elements. All right. So let's, let's go to fire and explosions. Cause I need, I need something. Too big. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that's a cannon fire. All right. Now I'm just thinking I may I may want to process this destructively. So I'm going to go into some EQ here. And same thing, we're just gonna roll, we gotta take that high end edge off. So let's roll everything off above like 4K. 
Let's do it really steep too. Nice. Yes. Let's also drop the master gain about 7 dB. All right. And we've got two hits here. So I'm going to take this. Actually, let's do this in reverse. I'm going to take the initial hit. How do I best want to do this? No, I'll take the secondary hit here and we'll paste it over top of itself. I'm going to combine these attacks so that it doesn't sound like a ga ga. It's just going to be ga. All right. Command X. Delete that sucker. Come in here. Paste right where our cursor is. Combines them. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. I don't want that. Sorry. Not paste. I want mix paste. And I want to overlap. Oh, but is this going to extend it? I don't know if it will or not. Let's see. It did. Okay. All right. So now it's just a single hit. Now, again, that's a bit dramatic for him hitting the floor, but you're going to feel that, right? You're going to feel that. Whoops. So just knock my, knock my headphones off. That's what you want it to do. It should knock your headphones off. So let's go ahead and save this. Explosion cannon fire to uh, EQ'd. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my punch sound effects folder where I'm keeping all of these things that we're using. All right, come in here. Let's grab this, we'll stick it up on track three. All right. Crashing to the floor. And for timing. Yeah, see, I, I, I moved these around a little. So let's see how this sounds. doing it for me. Now, having said that, let's try a little reverb on this. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to enable it only when this hit comes on. Let's turn the power of this on. All right. Like this. Maybe I don't need the delay on this at all. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that's, if that's kind of killing it for me. I think it might be. I think that's, I think that's not doing it. So let me see about taking this off right here. Let's see if that makes it better. Yeah. Is it a little late? I think it's a little late. All right. So let's move this. I think he's, I think he actually hits right about there. So we're going to move these back again. All right. Again, it's all about the precision, right? So let's see. 
Oh, yeah, that's better. There we go. Turn this one back on. We maybe need to move this. Okay, now we've got a bit of a butum. We don't want that. We don't want a flam. <laughs> Drummer term there. We don't want a flam here, so we gotta line these up. Alright. I've got some weird snapping going on. Yeah, I don't want snap course. Alright. So looking at attack transients, that looks good right about there. Not bad. Now I still think it needs a bit of a, a bit more of a doom. So maybe we can get this from one of the pillow hits. That 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 just might do it. All right. So we're gonna twirl these up. Track four has got some open space. All right. And uh, I'm gonna actually move this over as well. Grab this. <laughs> nice. So the reverb is on this track the whole time. Or at least it's on in this, sorry, it's on still at present here. So it's making this sound a bit brighter than we want. I don't want that at all. So once again, I'm going to kill the verb on this. But let's put everything else back in. Yeah. This is a tough one. Let's get a little more creative, I think, because it's just I'm not feeling it. I like it, but again, this is a bit bright, so clip effect. All right. And uh, oh, yeah, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and save. All right, we're going to call this version four. No, I don't want to move any files. And uh, go back into our parametric. And I want to give a little bit of a bump. Let's do around 70 hertz. Fairly narrow. All right, so it gives us some nice thump. Someone the other day mentioned, what about a kick drum? Kick drum could work. Excuse me, could work here too. That was nice. <laughs> Sorry about that. Kick drum could work here too. Uh, let's see. Bad. And you can hear it's getting kind of squiggly because we're hearing all this other stuff in the background. So let's turn that off. Let's turn that off. Now, with that like that, if I turn it back, if I turn the reverb back on. You see, the reverb is set to be fairly bright. I think we're almost there. I just don't like that reverb. So let's do this. So we could make another bus if we want with a darker reverb. Um, we can also try, uh, if we want, nah, I don't want any more delay there. I think we're, we're good with the delay. Let's see if we got if we can find one more sound. Ooh. 
That might be just what I was looking for. If you're in headphones, you're feeling it right now. So remember, a lot of times it's that ambient, you know, eerie, ethereal kind of thing that's gonna give you that effect. So this is distant military war. I don't know. Yeah, this is very, very specific here. We, obviously we don't need this much. And it's also probably a bit, a bit loud, but that might just be the additional piece that we need. I think we've got the attack. We just, I just want more of that sub, that sub bottom. I think that may have just been it. All right. And again, even though our video ends, I'm gonna extend this and we'll let it taper off via a fade. All right. And you can see I've got those on clip fade tools as well. Oh yeah. And look at how you, it, you can hear, there's a bit of an echo going, uh, 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 uh. watch the visual. Oh, here, I'll, I'll loop it for you. Um, you can actually see the, the corner here. It almost moves, it feels like it's moving in time with the sound, check it out. And we didn't plan that, it just, it just kind of happens, right? I think we're onto something, friends. My desk is shaking. Yes. Yes, Mia. Love that. Eric Sue, does Adobe Rush have sound fade out options? Yes. So if you go into the transitions button, which you'll find uh, in the upper right with all of your all of your tools, if you're on mobile, it'll be down at the bottom. Um, the transitions are the, it's the same. It's the same transitions panel for both video transitions and audio. So if you grab the crossfade, tap and drag or click and drag the crossfade in transitions to the end of, the, of an audio clip, and it'll allow you to adjust uh, a fade out. All right. Victor Jimenez, what's up? Joshua Smith, RIP headphone users. <laughs> the JBLs are booming. I love it. Waking up at 6 a.m. dot wave. Yes. All right. Super cool. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. So I think these. Now. I think we also, we need some kind of little attack right there. So by the way, I mean, I don't wanna, I don't wanna emphasize this for any other reason other than the collection is extensive, but in our native loopology, fire and explosions, you see there's just, there's, you know, so much C4 cannon, Civil War era cannon. All right, distant air bomb, distant cannon. That, that could almost work. Probably thinking, how? I don't know. This distant cannon one for this first, when, he, when it hits the banister, just for a little bit of attack. All right, let's see. I don't, I don't know, but let's see. It, it, maybe it can. I'm gonna twirl some of these up. By the way, here's another little, uh, if you don't need the full visibility of a track, rather than manually adjusting the height, <clears throat> if you just double click on the, actually, it's, is it single click or double click? I guess it's a double click. Single click. Single click. Somewhat inconsistent. Single click on the waveform icon in your track headers. It just minimizes them to the smallest 
level possible. So it just, again, it just kind of keeps things clean. And because we have the markers, we don't, we don't need to see all of these anyway. I was, uh, there's re, you know, I was still looking at automation and stuff. That's why we have that like that. But it just makes it a little bit easier to move stuff around. Um, okay, so what did I just grab? This one, distant cannon. So let's, let's see if that will, if that will work. I'm not sure that it, that it will. And again, it's, it's a, it's a pretty short duration. So, all right, this one we need expanded. So first of all, kind of just, again, it's like a two part hit. So let's do this. Yeah, I don't know if that one's gonna work. All right, maybe just from there. All right, we don't need the initial attack. Maybe just this. So let's grab it, shrink it, drag it over. All right, check for timing. So here's the attack transient. Let's slide this over just a little. All right. I'm gonna need a little EQ or maybe uh, maybe a little bit of um, effects on this. Again, dropping clip volume versus track volume. Let's see. Ooh! Whoa! Watch, watch that now when I listen and watch. The leather bit, it, it now it seems like it's the leather is reacting. Ha <laughs> I like it. Cut, print, chip. Check the gate. All right. I like it. We may come back, we may finesse more, but you're getting the idea now. And again, look at how many hits. That's three hit, four hits already, plus the sheet metal, okay? All to kind of simulate this thing hitting some rubber or, uh, or vinyl or leather, whatever the heck it is. Um, oh, am I out of time? I'm out of time. I ran out of time. Oh my God. How did time get away from me? Well, if you're still watching, wow, that sucks. Just got cut off on Behance. Okay, well, I forgot. I wasn't even paying attention. I was just like so lost in it. But that's what sound design is. <laughs> well, it may still be going on YouTube. I don't know. For certain, it's still going on, uh, on uh, Twitter Periscope. In the meantime... I'm going to come back a little bit later today and finish this off. Sorry, I wasn't able to end the stream properly. Uh, I got lost in the sauce. I know. <laughs> Everyone's saying he got cut off. I just, I wasn't watching the time. All right. Thank you, Jake. So, yeah, technically, well, you know what? I'm just going to keep this going for a minute. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. All right, let's just watch the whole thing back. Let's add in our ambience. Oh, yeah. I'm super pleased with that. The, the slow-mo bits are killer, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's doing it. That's doing it. All right, friends. Well, I'm going to try and get back on stream in about an hour or so if you want to see, and I'll try and kind of finish this up. Sorry for those of you who are tuning in on Behance. We got cut off, but... Uh, just lost in the zone. I don't apologize. <laughs> I mean, I do to you. I don't apologize to the creative overlords. But in any case, um, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you again next time.
Take care, everybody. And we're going to send it over to uh, uh, the Adobe XD Creative Challenge. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.